Hey guys, I want to give a huge shout out to the No Thumbs crew. Recently, we did a legit round one on Dead of the Night Zombies map. It was an absolute insane strategy. I'm going to be showing you guys everything we did. Originally, I had made a video showing that we did it on round one and in a custom lobby. And the reason why they did that is because they were testing and practicing for the legit run. And they just wanted to use the custom lobby to give themselves money. The custom lobby wasn't necessary for the round one, but they didn't want to use a bunch of elixirs when they were just testing. For this round one strategy, you definitely need a lot of points. And they figured out a method to make unlimited points in a regular lobby with just elixirs. I've never seen so much strategy go into one game. This was absolutely insane. They utilized every mechanic possible in this map to make it work. So I'm going to be making two parts to this round one legit Easter egg. The first part is going to show you guys the money setup and how that works. There's a lot to it so I didn't want to cram it into one video. The second video is going to be the actual gameplay of going through the different challenges and what all they had to do to max it out to get into that boss fight on round one. In addition to doing the full main easter egg on round one which includes the wonder weapon, the pack-a-punch, and all the challenges, we were also able to acquire the stake melee weapon. Now that is not necessary for this main easter egg run but these guys are that good. We were able to get it. So in this part one video I'm just just going to be showing you guys how to make a ton of money on round one. We got over 60,000 points. We could have kept going, but we didn't need any more money. Also, again, this is a regular classic lobby. This is not custom mutations. You start out with 500 points each, and we were able to crank those points up to an insane amount. Also, none of us purchased elixirs. We just used the elixirs that we had earned from the start of Black Ops 4 being released. So there was absolutely no money spent in this game whatsoever. Anyone that has been playing since day one will probably have the elixirs to be able to do this. Although I'm showing you guys how to do this, I don't think a lot of people will want to do this, but it was important to show you what all they had to do to make round one work. And for those of you that want to make some extra money, you might be able to take some of this strategy and utilize it. The first thing you have to do for this strategy is have a minimum of three people. That is what's going to keep the elixir circulating and allow people to come back in, drop more points, go back and get more. Another thing that's really important for making a ton of money in in the early rounds is that you cannot touch the Sentinel artifact. You cannot activate it on dead of the night. If you do, players can no longer join back into your match. I'm not sure what the requirements are for the other maps, but I assume that if you do touch the Sentinel artifact, say on Voyage of Despair, you can no longer invite people into your game. You can try to invite them, but when they try to join, it's just going to say lobby is unavailable. So everything we had to do to make all this money for this round one is to do it all before we touch the Sentinel artifact. So we couldn't allow these certain barriers to be opened. We only opened just a few doors to give us a little bit of room to run just the 10 zombies around that were on the map. In this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you the perspective of the host for the most part. I was the host. I was the one that was bringing the players back into the game. And the first thing I want to show you is the initial loadout that everybody had for elixirs. To make 2,900 points each from the very beginning of the match, you want to have one person have double points and the other three players have a nuke. The elixir loadouts will change for these players as they join and leave the match and I'm going to keep them on screen to show you what the other three players have and what's necessary for this. So it's going to be my perspective. You'll always see my elixirs on screen. Those are not going to be changing but player two, three, and four's elixirs will be. So the first step is yes get the double points going and get the nukes going but again we're trying to do this on round one so we don't want to be killing round one zombies. So we want to hit those nukes at a very specific time. So as all players are loading into the match, you're going to have a black screen with the Black Ops 4 logo spinning on the bottom right. What you want to do is start spamming on the d-pad whatever elixir you're going to be using. For me, I was using the double points. So I was hitting the up on my d-pad as fast as possible whenever that black screen was happening. That allowed us to start drinking the elixirs before the match even really loaded in. And we were able to hit that double points and nukes before the zombies were ever affected. And as you can see, we all got 2,900 points just from those four elixirs. So this was the very first step that we used in earning extra points for this strategy. And this is something anybody can do. It's pretty simple. And yeah, it gives you a lot of points right as you load into the map. So we had one double points and three 
three nukes used up. The next step was to open those bookcases to see if we could get any points from there. After opening the bookcases, we saw, yes, we have a points drop and it only gives you 500 points, but we had another player that had a double point. So we were gonna utilize that before we picked it up. So we would have an extra thousand. This player that had the double points also had an extra credit and we wanted to have that double points affect that extra credit. And there's a way to do that. After you drink an elixir, there's a certain amount of time that you have to wait before you can drink another one. So all you have to do is drink the one that you want to have out on the map and that's the double points. Then you just sit there and wait for the double points to get really close to the end where it's about to disappear. So it's gonna start flashing slowly and then start speeding up pretty rapidly. And at that point, you wanna grab it. You can see their elixir loadout on the right is almost ready for them to be able to use another one. So they grab the double points and right now their extra credit came back they can pop that extra credit, drink that, and double those points. During the time that player three is using their double points, the other two players are gonna drop their extra credits as well. And at that point, that's when I went and picked up the secret bookcase money drop and also picked up all three of their extra credits while the double points was running. Now you can see it's got me up to 8,900 points. And right now what they wanna do is start using their money drop. That's a free elixir and start giving me all of their points. This method with just these initial elixirs got me up to about 15,000 points, but we wanted to keep going and I'll show you guys the trick for making that work. This tutorial is to show you, yes, how you can make a ton of money in the early rounds, but it's also to show you what we had to do for the setup for certain elixirs that we needed. In addition to obviously needing a lot of money for round one, we also needed to make sure that everybody had a full meter on their special weapon. There's a trick that you have to do with a special weapon to make the round one happen. So we had to incorporate power kegs with the players that were rejoining in their elixir loadout so that we could start filling up each of the players special meters. Since the special weapon was critical to making this legit round one Easter egg work, we needed to have as many full meters as possible and as many power kegs in the elixir loadout ready to go. So as we did this money strategy, we also circulated in power kegs and got all the players filled up. And for the star of the show and what makes this all possible is one of the epic elixirs and that is the join the party. As most people already know, if you join in to Black Ops for Zombies, you have to wait for someone to end the round before you're actually in the map. But with join the party, you can skip all that. People can join your game, you do not have to end the round, and you can bring them into the game. So right here we finished using all of the elixirs and doing all the points with what we had and two of the players left and that's important. You only want two players to leave. You need one player to stay with the host and have that join the party ready to go. And you can see on the bottom right, I have a join the party as well, but I don't wanna use mine. I'm the host. I'm gonna use mine at the very, very end when we're ready to go into the Easter egg and start it. And everybody is ready with their final loadouts and we're done making points. So my join the party is gonna be used for the final join back and when we're ready to go in. And what we need to do now is circulate in players and they need to bring in join the party so that they can keep those three players circulating and bringing in points. This might sound a little confusing, but I'll explain it the best that I can. Also with this strategy, it was a good idea to keep the zombies in one area right here in front of the Sentinel artifact. They ran a train right here and that allowed us to not get so tangled up with all the zombies with having no doors open. So two players left and they went back to the main lobby to change their elixir loadouts to keep this cycle going. And I'll show you guys everything that they brought in. Once they had their elixirs set up and they joined back in, they made sure they were spectating. And as soon as they said, yeah, we're both spectating, they had the second player with that join the party, drink that elixir and bring them back in. So player three and four are back in the game. They've got new elixir loadouts. They brought in carpenters instead of nukes because obviously we don't want to be killing zombies. They also brought in double points and extra credits. So obviously double points goes first and then they did the extra credits and then the carpenters after that. 
They're also putting all the extra credits on me. I'm trying to get as much money as I can. I'm the banking system. I'm going to be the one that distributes the points back at the end when they're done cycling in and bringing in more elixirs. After they used up all the elixirs, they started using their many drops to drop money and give me all the points that they could. It goes in 500 point increments. The point drop elixir you can use really rapidly. There's only a few seconds for cooldown and you can give people points really quickly. This was the first time that they joined back when they changed their loadouts and it got me up to about 20,000 points. Once we had done everything we could do, we had two players leave again, go change their loadouts and come back in with more elixirs. And the way you keep this cycle going is that player three that just brought in that brand new join the party, they're gonna stay because player two has already used theirs. So they're going to leave along with player four, go change their elixirs, and then they're going to get invited back in by player three. So right here, player two and four, they're going to leave and the player three spot is going to move to player two spot. Then once they have their loadouts changed and set correctly, they're going to join back, but also let us know when they are spectating. And at that point, player two is going to use that join the party to bring them back in. And as you can see, player three and four's loadouts are identical to what they were whenever we brought two players back the first time. And they'll do the exact same thing. They'll use the double points, then the extra credits, then the carpenters, and then give me all the money that they can. Then we repeated the cycle. Player two's got to leave because he's already used his join the party and player three has a brand new one that he can use. So he's going to stay in the game while player two and four leave because he's going to be able to bring them back and they're going to have new elixirs to use to give more points. And you can just keep this cycle going until you have the points that you want. And the join the party elixir, in my opinion, is a little bit useless. But with this method, these guys have made this a very useful elixir. Now I'm going to show you guys the point increments that happened as they joined back each time with new elixirs. So the starting match before they left the first time, I got up to almost 15,000 points. And then each time they joined back, they got me anywhere between 6,000 and 7,000 points. On the seventh rejoin, I got 60,000 points and we stopped there because we didn't really need any more to do the low round Easter egg. So between the four of us, we only had to use seven join the parties and we all had like three or four each. And that's probably what most people have at this point if you've played the game since day one. So it's a very reasonable method. You don't have to spend money on elixirs or anything like that. I will tell you that this is very time consuming. And the reason why that is, is because you're waiting for people to leave the lobby and join back in and that joining back process can take a few minutes. They were waiting for the lobby to load in and that's definitely what slows it down. And to get 60,000 points, it took us about 45 minutes. And this is 100% legit strategy. Treyarch has implemented the join the party elixir and this is the best way to use it. In the next video, I'm gonna show you guys how we got to the boss fight on round one in a regular classic lobby. It was 100% legit, no glitches. There were some really critical things that had to happen in that game that I didn't show in the previous video where we did it in a custom lobby. If you do it in a regular classic lobby, you have to change some things up. So I'm going to show you guys all of that. And I'm really excited to share with you all the cool things they figured out. But I hope you guys enjoyed this. And again, huge shout out to No Thumbs crew. These guys are incredible. And we'll see you guys next video. Thank you for watching Glitching Queen's video. Oorah!